Okay, so now I would like to talk about how to map gene expression data in terms of biological pathways. First, I would like to describe what a biological pathway and a biological process are. Um, let's talk about the biological process first. So what is a biological process? A biological process is the set of all molecules required to perform a biological function. A biological pathway is the set of all molecular interactions that belong to a biological process. Given these two terms, what you can do then is you can map your gene expression data and represent it in terms of biological processes and biological pathways. The following two graphs I will show will describe what gene expression data looks like when you map the ex your gene expression data onto biological pathway maps and um, you can begin to understand what they mean in terms of their biological processes. So I just show two of these. It, I couldn't get this thing to fit on here. I converted it to PDF, but I couldn't. So this is from the KEG database, and this is the PPAR signaling pathway. And the red boxes are the genes at 48 hours on this pathway that are overlaid. This is angiopoietin, like 4, aquaporin, and HMG. And then here's the same thing with fatty acid metabolism pathway. I used uh, a, a tool originally from UCSF. I can't remember it, like Gene Mapper or something. But I found I could do this in R way easier without using a GUI. So I just did that. Skip that. <clears throat> so, so uh, I used. Oh, do you want to go back? No, I just skip. I just skip that. Okay, because I think my time is. Um, okay, so uh, I, I used hypergeometric testing to to look for keg pathways and go terms. Okay, um, it's basically a Fisher's exact test, or it's um, um, where you're testing the association between two categories or more of interest. Sorry. So the question then is the question then is how many genes in the on the array are annotated at a given term, and how many of those are also in your set of interesting genes. So this is like a little pet example. So say you have 1,000 genes in your array. Um, in your go term category, there's 40. What's the probability that 10 of the 40 are going to also be in your interesting gene set? So you, you actually will observe this you, from the annotation. And, and then you ask yourself, how likely is that to happen? If it, cut, if it passes the threshold, then you say, OK. So with the pet example, you get 0.99. And if you include the, the universe, you'll get a smaller, that is the population size, if you get a, you'll get a smaller p-value. But just, just wanted to let you know. Let me just skip this. Okay, let's go to the biological stuff really quick. Um, so the overrepresented over go terms, um, again, I wanted to put this in a table, but I couldn't fit it all. So I used this thing. Okay. So energetic and metabolism pathway activities is the theme of the experiment. Um, you can see in the biological process, metabolism. Um, this is an interesting one, I thought. Um, lipid particles, every, a lot of mitochondrial stuff, mitochondrial energy, energy stuff, um, electron transferring stuff, okay. <clears throat> and then this I just show, I couldn't get it, again, the size. This is just a visualization of the hierarchical structure of the GO. It's a diacyclic graph. Um, where the red highlighted ones are, are the go terms that were associated with the gene set of interesting genes at, let's say, eight hours. Um, and I overlaid them in, in red. And you, you're, okay. So it uh, looks like I'm basically out of time, but uh, this is the pathway. I'll just show one last thing. This is essentially the pathway. Um, what's actually going on. Cardiac energetics, um, fatty acid liver metabolism. This drug is, we think, um, affecting these genes. So I'm going to skip that. This is just a visualization of the actual molecular mechanisms of uh, TZDs. So you've got P par gamma. <clears throat> you've got the response elements here. So rosiglitazone binds to P par gamma, which is a nuclear receptor, goes down 
and recruits the transcription of the gene. Okay. So there's some level, there's some limitations. Um, but let me just go to the acknowledgments. Um, I'm out of time. So I would like to thank uh, Dr. Pellini for assigning me this project, um, um, my committee, and uh, th these guys right here, Frank Gonzalez, and these guys helped in the RNA. Um, um, Seth Falcon for some R stuff. Um, um, Andrew Carmen, and of course UCSD and Biogem, um, and these other people, Thomas Kirk and UCR. Um, oh, this is just a normalization. I thought, again, somebody would want that. Um, <clears throat> so I quantile normalized the data, the arrays. This is the unnormalized or non normalized, and after you normalize them, that's what you get. So that's in a nutshell. Uh, my my report. I didn't get to cover everything, but that's, that's <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. So questions just came from the committee first, I guess. So you uh, and quite a few. Uh, I just picked up those slides. He jumped over. Oh, okay. And sure. He has 150 pages of. Which, uh, here, I'll just. So, does GlaxoSmithKline know you did this? Here? Yeah. Oh, I have, a, I have a thing I just. So, okay. So, one of the interesting things that came up, or that, that I'm thinking about, for example, so the previous work, for example, was Shaw, the, the lady in 2002. So, they used the drug from GlaxoSmithKline. And we we didn't in this study. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know where we got it from exactly. And the only problem with that is that is that um, is that see Rosie has a patent to 2012, so there's no generic there's no approved generic form available. So it's like if you said, hey, I want to reproduce your experiment, you'd have to get the drug that we use from wherever we, wherever they got it from. And I don't exactly know where that is. So that is, yeah. So. so well, it's very <laughs> No, no, you don't buy this. Maybe. Okay. 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 Here, let me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, we kept on doing that. The, the hassle that we uh, honestly bypassed just because it got tedious and tiresome is that you've got to file a fair amount of paperwork to keep on requesting that. Right. Glaxo and Klein gave us the drug for about uh, six years. After that, we felt guilty. Uh, uh, but uh, the, the purity of the uh, compound that we used is unquestionably the real stuff. Um, so, um, in retrospect, we probably just should have gone back to the um, We had actually, for the initial experiments that we did, had underwriting complaints with a couple of things. Well, that was the, the second part of the question is do they care? <laughs> they care, especially since this is, well, I should let you say, it's a positive finding that there's a cardioprotective effect in this stuff in a deep treatment. It improves. So the interesting thing, that's why when I said it was controversial, so in 2007, GlaxoSmithKline, the FDA actually issued a black, a black box warning to Avandia because it causes heart failure. It worsens heart failure in certain subpopulations of type 2 diabetic patients. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> so, when, so I think, so whenever they say cardio, so it's true. I mean, that's the problem with biology. It's like, you, know, you have some stuff that's positive, beneficial, and then some stuff that's detrimental. It's not like like an all-or-nothing thing, and so. But it is true. I mean, there are aspects, features of it that are beneficial to the heart, and then there's other that are not. So.